Good afternoon, everyone. We're glad that you're here with us for another Cooper Rankin Lunch and Learn. Today, we're introducing a, a, a new presenter to the Cooper Rankin Lunch and Learn lineup. Today, we've got Josh Crawford taking us through the Leica TS16 product. And Josh, I'm just going to turn it right straight over to you. I'll be here in the background in case anybody needs anything, but I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about the Leica TS16. All yours, Josh. Thanks, Douglas. I'm looking forward to presenting as well. This was a really interesting topic. All right. have your screen, Josh. Awesome. Thank you for confirmation. So like Douglas said, my name is Joshua Crawford, and we're going over the TS16 model differences today. So a little bit about me. Um, I started surveying at about 16 when I was just a field hand at a small survey firm in Boise with my father and my uncle. Um, then I started actually surveying in 28, or I'm sorry, 2019, and went there for about two and a half years doing surveying, drafting, um, project management. I did records of the surveys as well. Um, we mainly, <clears throat> mainly worked in land development. So like subdivisions and also commercial properties, construction plans, stuff like that. I also attended two years of college at Idaho State University. So we'll just dive on in. So there are some key features that come stock on all TS-16 models. Um, they're all available in one in, or sorry, one, two, three, and five second accuracies, which is, the angle uh, it comes internal two gigabytes of uh, s storage or you have the option for the external sd card they're all motorized they're available in r500 or r1000 which means range and it's in meters so it's 500 meters or 1000 meters except the G model, that one is only available in 30 meters or 1000 meters. They all come stock with internal short range Bluetooth and they're all compatible with Captivate apps, which is on the gun itself. So you don't have to have a data collector. And they're also compatible with icon software, which is really nice because uh, some icon is geared a little bit more towards uh, construction. So it's really nice that they're compatible together. So you don't have to get a whole new setup if you're already running Icon. Um, works in pretty much all weather, rain and snow, and its operation is down to negative 20 degrees Celsius and up to 50 degrees Celsius, which means you can work pretty much all the time and not have to worry about it. Um, it also comes stock with automatic instrument height, which is really great because it takes the human error out of measuring the instrument height. So the first model is the entry level model. It's the TS-16M. And this one comes with a guide light and the guide light as you can see a little right here that is just flashing like orange lights so you know which way the gun is facing um, which will help you decide which way the gun needs to turn in order to lock onto your prism the atr and automatic target aiming is really great which is on the ts16a it the automatic target aiming allows for a small window search and it's four degrees by default. You can always change that in the settings. And the ATR plus, which will be shared in the chat, it allows the instrument to learn specific targets and it won't lock onto other reflective surfaces like mirrors or windows or he headlights for instance 
Next, we have the TS-16G. This one is a little different. It doesn't have the guide light because it comes with uh, an external laser, which allows you to uh, point the laser at a specific point, which is good for like tunneling and boring. And it gets up to, um, the laser size is about 30 millimeters at 250 meters, which is just about the size of this Kukurinkan keychain here. If you can see it, it's just a little bit smaller than that. Um, and I forgot to mention earlier that all of these <clears throat> features that I previously mentioned, we're just building on top of them. So as we go on, all of those previous features, excluding the gut, uh, laser guide uh, is added on to the next one. So the TS-16P, which stands for Power Search, it allows you to hit a simple button and it'll do a 360 degree search for the prism. And so that one also includes everything that I previously mentioned with the exception of the laser guide. So then we get to the TS-16i, which is the highest model you can get. It's really great. It has a five megapixel camera inside of the gun. So you can see what the <clears throat> uh, instrument is showing or is seeing. So say you're out in the field and something's obstructing your view to your prism or your target that you're trying to uh, measure. And so you can look through the camera on your data collector, a CS20 or a CS30, and you'll be able to see what's in the way instead of having to go back behind the instrument and look through the scope to see what is obstructing your view. So it'll save you time. And when you save time, you save money. All right, so all of the TS-16s are compatible. However, there are some caveats to that. Um, the TS-16M, which was the entry level, it only comes with the height, uh, which is an automatic uh, target height. And it will, on your data collector, on the specific pole that you buy, it will automatically measure the height from the bottom of the pole to the prism, which also allows for less blunders. You know, human error is a pretty big issue when it comes to surveying. Um, the TS-16s A and G, they come with the height and the tilt compensation. Tilt compensation is amazing. I mean, being able to get, say a point you need to shoot is right behind a tree and you can go, you just tilt by that, as you can see in the picture, um, and you can get the same accuracy as if you were pointing straight at it and plumb on the point. Now the T is 16 P and the eyes, they come with the target ID height and tilt. The target ID is allows for the specific prism to be learned by the instrument. It will, it say there's multiple prisms on one field or one job site. It will only lock to the specific one that it learns. Also that's available on all of them is a thing called Locate. It's like an app. It has a GPS tracking um, and it gives you the ability to receive frequent position updates um, up to, I think, one minute. Uh, you can be alerted when the instrument is on the move and exits a geofenced area. Um, which you can set up around your office or a job site and to just to make sure that they aren't going anywhere that they're not supposed to go. Um, so it also creates theft deterrence because it can be tracked. 
And it also gives you the ability to remotely lock and unlock the total station if it goes somewhere it's not supposed to. So then it just renders it useless. So if somebody steals it, there is no way that they're going to be able to do anything with it. There's actually been several instances in the company where people have had this on their instruments and were able to get their instruments back instead of having to go through insurance and replace a brand new total station, which, as we all know, can be very expensive. Uh, so that it's really great. Let's see. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Josh, we've got one question here. Uh, is the video from the camera uh, coming through the gun? Is the video from the camera coming through the gun? Yes, it is on the gun. It is a five megapixel camera inside the gun, and you can see it either through the gun or on the screen of the gun, or you can see it on the data collector. Okay, so far, that's the only question that we've we've had uh, come up. Um, and Doug, thank you for your question. We're glad to glad to have it. I'm trying to see if we've got anything coming through the the Facebook side, and it looks like we we don't at the moment. Uh, what is the IP rating, Josh, on the the system? It is IP fifty five. IP fifty five. And another question just came in, and this is going to be a little bit of personal juxtaposition. Do you prefer the CS20 or the CS35? Uh, CS20, absolutely. <laughs> you, know, you say CS20, why do you prefer the CS20 over the CS35? I prefer the CS20 because uh, the size, it's very, it's compact. It's got a very nice screen. The touch screen isn't super sensitive. It works in all weather and that I think is rated IP65. So it's very durable as well. It, uh, let's see. And the keypad is amazing as well. So you can type in your codes and you don't have to wait for the little uh, keyboard to pop up. Yeah. So that's right. pretty much why I like the CS20. Well, now the questions are coming hot and heavy for you, Josh. The next, next question that came up is what software would you use with the imaging capability of the TS-16? What software would I use? Which, which software tools would you use for the imaging capability? Um, that it's something you'd use okay. Infinity for? Yeah, you could use it with Infinity as well. Um, yeah, so you can take pictures and bring them into Infinity and have them linked to that point specifically if you wanted, or you can just bring in the pictures. Okay, so if I understood what you said correctly, you, you prefer, or you, you, uh, you like Infinity because you can tie an image to a geolocation point or to where you took your shots? Correct. It, yes, so when you bring it into Infinity, it has a grid, basically, um, with your uh, coordinate system. And so it will show exactly where that picture is with that point. And you can click on that point, and it'll show that it'll have, it has a picture. And you can bring up the picture and see what it is exactly that you took a shot of, just in case, you know, it's six months goes by and you need to go back and look at it. Okay, I'm just looking to see if we have any other questions that are coming in here, uh, both on Facebook, watching on Facebook and watching here in the, the locals. Uh, one, another question has just come in is, why would one choose between the R500 and the R1000? And that's an answer I can't help with. I don't have an answer there. Really just depends on how far you want to go. I mean, like how far you need to go. It depends on the user. Um, it's just about distance. So R500, I mean, 500 meters is pretty far, right? I don't know the exact conversion off the top of my head and feet. Um, but R1000 is, I mean, an amazing distance and you can still get incredible accuracy at 1000 meters. So that is really, it just depends on who needs. So, okay, so the question is, the, the, a question did just come forward about it. Uh, isn't the R500 actually more accurate? I don't um, know that that's, I, I don't think that's true, but. I, um, I don't believe so. I believe they're the same. 
Yeah, they're both the same, according to this. I'm sorry, I'm taking a little bit out of your depth here, Josh, but... You're, no, that's okay. I appreciate it. I don't it. know the answer to question. some of these myself. Yeah. Um, it, included in the chat, there should be some uh, data sheets, um, uh, specifically for the TS-16. It goes over the distance measurement uh, accuracies. Okay. And it is, I'm reading point, point 0.9 meters at a uh, 1,000 meters and okay. 500 meters. So there is no difference. And Doug, I think you knew this, uh, the individual asking the question. I think you are aware that the uh, R stands for the reflectorless uh, distance that, that's there. Oh, that's what that is. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome, Doug. Well, uh, Jeremy, I don't, or not Jeremy, excuse me, Josh, um, I don't know that we have uh, any other questions that are coming forward, so we'll give it just another few seconds for people to pop any questions in there. But uh, really pleased, this, you did a fantastic job on your, your first Lunch and Learn there. Well done. And yeah, appreciate you having all of our locations put up there, too. Yeah, so and also my contact information is located below. But we're all a team here, so we all work together, and we will make sure everybody gets taken care of. In the time so now, uh, out of all those stores you have listed there, what's what's Josh Crawford's favorite store in the Cucurankin chain? Uh, PDX. <laughs> Portland. You, you like the Portland store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I right. haven't got to see all the offices yet, so. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Well, folks, we, uh, as you know, we do these every Wednesday at noon. Uh, our, our next Lunch and Learn that we have coming up is uh, going to hit it, uh, going to come up to us on uh, June 14th with, with Rob uh, Mitchell. He's going to be taking us through the Field Genius product. And then after that, we'll be going into the Leica RTC 360. We have several different uh, lunch learns, of course, throughout the summer. We're going to keep going through all of these, only missing uh, the July 4th holiday. So we'll look forward, forward to seeing you at future lunch learns. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. And we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at our next lunch and learn. Take care, everyone. Be safe out there.